Hello everyone, welcome back to my hard career mode with stock parts and the Trappist system in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. That's quite a lot of things to say. Uh, but we had some problems in the previous episode. Uh, we lost Val and we lost Val to the re-entry heating. So I decided to test out the re-entry heating situation and it's sort of inconclusive. But I'm just going to go with the idea where I'm hard now, but it's going to change. So it's going to be a little bit less hard, but you know, the main things with hard mode is that we've got the rewards reduced and the penalties increased. So that's hard and I'm not doing any uh, reverting or quick loading. I won't resuscitate Val in any way, I guess. We'll just leave Val be. Val will have perished. That's going to be hard for us. I'll tell you, but I'm going to reduce the re-entry heating to 80%. To, to see if hopefully that helps. It's interesting that hard mode by default doesn't require signal for control. Um, I'll just leave that be. But I want to do Kerbal's level up immediately. So in that case, hopefully when we send Jeb up, which we will, Jeb will be able to hold retrograde properly. So that's the theory. Now I've added some scenery. You can see I have a city in the background. I added the bridge as promised. Uh, so that's there. That's just scenery. That's just for, and I'll try and add stuff to land though. Maybe I should wait until the space center gets upgraded. So I see how much space it takes and work around it or something. But anyway, that's back there just for our amusement. And now let's take a look at our contracts. We don't have any right now, but presumably we want to return to Kerbin from orbit. And we might as well get scientific data from space around Kerbin as well. We don't have any planes or anything. The only other thing is to eject things randomly. So, okay. But what can we do to mitigate the disaster, except for turn down the re-entry heating? Because, you know, without Jeb, we don't have anybody else, actually. That's it. That's the end of the line as far as pilots are concerned. And if they can't hold retrograde, we've seen that that might be a problem. So, one thing is... Well, we, don't, we weren't really imbalanced either. Uh, I was thinking that we had the antenna on one side, but we didn't. You know, that, that would tilt us a little bit, maybe. But no, that's not what happened. Um, maybe, I, maybe having the mob propellant in is better. I don't know. At least I tested with the mob propellant in the sandbox situation, so I should probably just have that. Now, we want to get science from orbit. This time I think I'll take the goo container, but I'll take it on this stage and then transmit that science. Uh, hopefully that'll be good enough. So uh, we had a little bit of extra Delta V last time. Uh, that's too many parts. We'll take these off. And we'll also add the antenna here. So we'll just dump that. A little bit expensive, but Actually, how much is the antenna 0 0.015 and how much is this 0 0.05? Hmm. It probably shouldn't throw us off that much if I just put one goo container. Because, I mean, I'm probably not going to use two. I just want to do science from orbit. And we can transmit it. I don't know if the goose science is going to take so much charge that we should have batteries, but we don't actually have batteries. That might be a little bit bad. <laughs> um, uh, we definitely, I'm definitely going to put all the ablator. We seem to be able to get to orbit with surprisingly little, but that was because the rotational velocity is so high. For that reason, it's got to be really hard to get to the poles, though. Pole orbit around this planet is especially difficult. Tell you what, we're going to try to get to orbit and come back and do it as simply as possible. And if, if Jeb doesn't get the extra point while in orbit, in other words, can't hold retrograde, I'm just going to leave him up there <laughs> for a while. We'll find some other way to do science on the ground. Uh, anyway, maybe desperation ways, but yeah, we, we don't want to lose Jeb. Jeb's our only pilot and, you know, the Kerbals cost a lot. We really need those rescue contracts somehow. Probably we have to unlock the ability to do EVAs. That costs 150000 for the astronaut complex. So, okay, well, 
with that being the case, let's go. We have to get a Kerbal in orbit and bring them back. I mean, there's no avoiding the fact that that's the goal here. I don't want to launch at night. I could put in Mech Jeb. Now, I swear, uh, if Jeb perishes on this, and <laughs> we're leaning to one side here, uh, if Jeb perishes on this, I'm going to revert it, okay? <laughs> uh, um, I'm gonna zip the save right now, and we're, we're going to we're going to revert it. I don't care. We need to be able to do this. I apologize to Val, but so what I what I would do is I'd put Mech Jeb in, and then let Mech Jeb hold the retrograde since. SAS won't be able to. Alright. So we are leaning to one side in a worrisome fashion. SAS on, throttle up, and launch. Let me try and get back to center here. Okay. Pass the speed of sound. Well, you can see the city and the bridge there. Okay, booster set. Throttle up. I could probably do something more with the city's terrain, but I didn't want to make it particular to this situation. It's just a square terrain. Uh, obviously, and now it disappears because we're out of the Kerbal Constructs rendering range, but uh, yeah. I could do more to have it fit the current terrain, but I wanted it to be more generically usable, the city I mean. But one other thing I discovered in the re-entry testing was it takes a lot of Delta V to come back from the Moon or Minmus, which also means that it takes a lot of Delta V to capture around the Moon or Minmus. So we'll have to keep that in mind for those missions. Okay, staging and ignition. We should be good on Delta V, even though we're carrying extra blader and mop repellent this time. I wonder if I should go for a somewhat higher initial orbit as well. After all, we, we lost less of blader and such coming back from the moon or Minmus than might be expected. And that's because we spent less time passing through the atmosphere. But the heating might be harsh, but we reduced the re-entry heating, so I don't know. It's tough to say. So I mean, you could uh, when I was testing the re-entry heating, I tested from basically a 210 kilometer orbit, which is not what we're going to here. We're going into a shallower orbit that would go through more of the atmosphere. So maybe, maybe I should toss it up a little bit more. Well, let's say one almost 160. Let me just coast and then circularize. So will Jeb get? I mean, Jeb isn't getting an extra point for getting into space, but orbit will that give him something? Oh yeah, there we go. Well, I'm gonna try and get more there. All right, so like that, 169 by 159, let's say. And is Jeb really good at this thing? Let's hope so. <laughs> Let's hope so. All right. Well, at the appropriate time, I will retro burn. I'm also not gonna go quite as steep. I'll go with 35 or whatever that is. Okay. I thought the volumetric clouds wouldn't do this sort of thing, but maybe it's they're thrown off by the scale. I don't know. But they were doing so well. Okay, we are coming down. We can get rid of the stage. Okay. Surface retrograde. That's all we want. Okay, well, ablation is happening. Let me just double check that our settings are... Yes. 80%. We 
we will see if the results are consistent with what we saw in the sandbox testing. We did know that they would get the thermometer there. That's warning us over overheating. That's nominal, I guess. Okay, well, I'll come out of Fizz Warp just in case. I swear the rate of ablation changed. Let me let me add Fizz Warp again. Yeah, it did. did I, actually, coming out of Fizz Warp, it's a different rate. Well, maybe that's because of the physics lag? I don't know. That seems suspicious. Okay, and I also thought that 80% re-entry heating definitely left a little bit of later left on the pod, right? Or on the heat shield there. It takes a long time for this to slow down. That's another reason to toss it further up and have re-entry be steeper. I think we gotta lose all the ablator anyway. <laughs> Hmm. Uh, might hold, but like just barely. G force wise, it's not too bad. We got to 4.3 G's there. And we definitely know this can't do descent mode, because descent mode would, you know, a lifting re entry would entail the pod tilting, as we did in the Val case, and it doesn't seem to be able to do that. <laughs> it, uh, yeah. So, lifting re-entry is not so good, not so good. But it certainly took all the ablator, not just half the ablator, which is what we had on Val's pod. I don't know if the heat shield would have survived if it lost all the ablator, it sort of did in the testing. But anyway, parachute time. Now hopefully we get some extra signs for this. Okay, splashdown. And recover. So success, but not in a way that totally alleviates our worries. It's got some science, got some value. Jeb did advance to level one. That's partly what saved us. Explore the moon. <laughs> well, that might be a little bit tough. Two tourists, suborbital space flight. Well, that's not too bad. It doesn't. Oh, well, this one wants orbit. But, and they're not going to be able to control the vessel, right? They're tourists. Test the heat shield landed at Kerbin. Well, that should be fine, right? Let's just, I mean, I, I can't say no to anything right now. Let's just take that. <laughs> Quickly. Okay. Run test. Okay. Done. <laughs> All right. Uh, no, recover vessel. Glad to be of service to science there. Now as far as these weird ones are concerned, we'll have to wait until we get a probe core, I'm pretty sure. I don't think we can just dump fire it. 28 science there. Well, everything else needs 45. What I would like to get is, well, the state putnik is a horrible probe core, but at least we'd get the battery, which could allow us to transmit science safely, or more safely. So yeah, um, I think I'm going to have a Kerbal just walk around. I'll cut this short for you guys. Uh, let's go to the runway. It's going to be a long run. Where's the... Yeah, there's the monolith too. I forget if we can do anything there. See our little speck of Jeb there? Okay. So... EV report? Oh, just 1.4. Okay, recover. Um, recover. This might be too slow. Well, I guess we can try to do the goo from space. Bring it back. Do I dare slap two goo containers on this as well? Let's dump the mob propellant then. Oh, well, we don't have mob propellant on here. Whoops, let me just make sure that's on there. Um, though again, that might make no difference. I don't know if having them clipped makes a difference either. We're gonna try to bring them back. And we we have to send Jeb. 
I mean, the other option is to unlock the astronaut complex, but that's 150,000. We wouldn't be able to launch a rocket. Okay, to orbit again. Hopefully we're not overloading anything here. And... launch. Quick turn around for Jeb. Will I, in the end, need to reconsider the rewards and penalties in this mode? We're past the speed of sound. Okay, booster set. Let's see about upper atmosphere goo. Only 1.2. No. Maybe if we land in a different biome it'd be better. I guess I'll save that. I'm gonna go slightly higher and then compare the re-entry. Now we don't have mob propellant this time but we're sort of counterbalancing that with extra mass with the goo containers. Okay, staging and ignition. Okay, well, I'll cut it there and coast. Okay, might as well do the science here as well. Observe mystery goo. Well, six science there. I'm keeping it. No, I'll try and even that out a little bit. I wonder what the barrier for high over is. I mean, obviously I didn't change it. Well, if it's still 250, or if it was 250, then we can get that. Okay, are we high over? Yes, we are. Nine science. So it's sort of like Polaris Dawn or something. Report? Yes, that's different too. We'll keep that as well, because we don't have a transmitter. Now uh, let me circularize. I don't really want to go any higher. So we're 232 by 260, and we're coming back down. Let's see. Okay, yeah, I'm going for 32.7. Trying to go a little bit steeper than last time because that took a long time to get through the atmosphere. Okay, knocking off the stage. Hopefully we'll be okay. Clipping in the goo containers is another sort of risky thing. Okay, holding retrograde. Let's see. The goo container should be within the footprint of the of the heat shield, but we're gonna find out the hard way on that one. Yeah, when I time warp it's 0.56 up there. Per physics second. But then when I come out of time warp it goes to 0.64. <laughs> but okay. That I can deal with for now, I think. I'll keep it in time warp then. At lower speeds now. And yeah, we we lost less of later. Putting the goo containers like that seems fine. So going higher is better. Um, 4.3 G's still. So that's another variable when comparing Val's attempt with the testing we did. We did the testing from, like I said, a higher orbit, basically like this one. And Val we kept in a lower orbit. But it turns out maybe the lower orbit was worse for her. Okay, parachute. Okay, and plop. Ooh! The heat shield did explode on contact with the ground, though. Alright. Ground texture's a little bit iffy, but fine. Fine. We don't get that value back, but we get the science, right? 20.5 science. Okay. Well. I mean could get some rudimentary plane parts. I mean, that's that's a reasonable option, right? If we if we got these, we could do some of those other missions and make a little plane. 
or we can go with the Sputnik and battery. Uh, let me see those contracts. I don't think they paid that well. Ooh, test the LV-1 Ant engine. Now you're talking. I, I just want to keep the LV-1 Ant engine. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna maybe take advantage of that. Yeah, these don't pay that much. Can we toss something over to the moon maybe? We don't even have patch conics or any way to figure out how to get to the moon. I don't, I don't know how long it takes. I don't think we can just wait for the moon to peek up above the horizon like we do in stock. Sign this waiver. Okay. We gotta try and send a probe by the moon, but it's a state Putnik that has no control. Yeah, and then I'm gonna try and use the ant engine. To supplement the situation. And we're going to try with the state Putnik. Now this has command, but no SAS. 1.7 charge per minute. Let's see if we can do without the boosters. Wish we had a fairing, probably. Oh, we've got that fuel tank. Well, I don't want to spend more money, so... Let's hold off on that. I want the ant. 4,825 meters per second in vacuum. How long does that take? Well, you know... I uh, come from realism overhaul, that's fine. But we probably need batteries. Four batteries. 1.7 per minute. And these are each 100 charge. That's not a lot of time. But it doesn't say anything about getting science back from the moon. It just says fly by the moon. It doesn't say anything about us having comms. So this is like good for four hours. I'll try and get more okay um hopefully more like six hours that would be good enough to get to the moon in the regular carbon system the stock system i don't think it's good enough here we don't have struts i haven't activated advanced tweakables yet i should do that Delta V-wise and cost-wise, we're not too bad. We're going to have negligible ability to stay stable. <laughs> because we have no SAS. Yeah, put extra fins. Oh, too many parts. Whoops. Okay, maybe just that much then. Maybe not quite as tall a rocket. Yeah, we can't even be that tall anyway. So 10,000 vacuum should get us to the moon. Call this Epsilon. But yeah, this is... Um, hmm. <laughs> this could go wrong. Oh, it's gonna start taking power already, so let's go. No SAS, and... Go. Go. This ant doesn't have any... Oh, but yeah, we can't really use the ant because it doesn't have any gimbling. Shoot. The Probodobodyne State Putnik doesn't have, gim uh, doesn't have the reaction wheel. Okay. Whoa, whoa. Approaching speed of sound. We're a little bit more horizontal than I'd like to be. Okay, I want the staging to happen more like that. Okay. Ah, the terrier! No! The fins have gone and now the terrier is doing bad things. I should have known. Okay, you know what? Oh, it doesn't even have enough thrust to weight ratio. Oh, well, we're going in the wrong direction anyway. Um, we're definitely just going to dumb fire the... Stay putting it to as high an altitude as we can. 
Maybe we can get to escape. I doubt it. But we can see. Wish I could spin the stabilizer or something. It's too long a burn time with the ant though. What if I bypass? Can I enable crossfeed on this one? Oh wait, that they're at a higher one. Oh wait, uh, it seems to be taking from this tank. Okay, well maybe the delta v reading is not right now. I don't know what good this will do, but since we can't really use the ant effectively, well, we're gonna launch this high up. Higher than the Kerbal has gone. But uh, it's gonna come down pretty roughly, too. Okay, that's that. It's high, but it's not moon high. Maybe that would have counted as testing that decoupler. I'll have to think about that. But actually, maybe we can transmit from space high over Kerbin with these two. Yeah. Uh, I think we should have enough power. Okay, we've got those two done. So, something came out of this. And there is a hibernating warp thing for the state putnik, so maybe that that would help us get to the moon properly. Could argue that I should set the level for high over the earth or over Kerbin a bit higher. Okay, we're in the atmosphere. Let's see if any Kerbal magic happens. Eh, probably not. Very much not. Okay, back to Space Center. All right, well, I mean, again, I get the astronaut complex upgrade, but, you know, to do EVAs, but we really are tight on funds as far as that's concerned. Now, the that will have to be escape velocity. I was mixing it up with the Thumper, which is between these altitudes. We could get it to escape velocity. Let's see about controllability here. We don't have anything. There's nothing. If you want a reaction wheel, that's 45. <laughs> or we could save up for 90 and get the octo plus the panels, which would be my preference. Hmm. Well, let's say we just directly attach this stage. And how much delta V is that? So not enough to get to the moon, I don't think. You could put boosters. With the boosters, we have 9,000, but four too many parts. If we just do hibernate and warp auto on this, we could probably take some of that off. Maybe we can get by with two batteries? But 2,000 more than orbit. It's about 2,000 more than orbit. I think we can do it. But I'm going to save finding that out for the next episode. Can this rocket... So, Delta Probe. Can the Delta rocket with a probe on top, with two batteries, and this business manage it? Or... Or not? <laughs> that is the question. Well, if we can manage it, we could probably unlock some technology that could seriously help us. If we can't manage it, we're going to be in a little bit of a pickle. Uh, we certainly can't get the astronaut complex thing, but then, again, because we wouldn't be able to launch a rocket after that, that's not so helpful. At least we can complete the ant engine one if uh, we fail this, but anyway, for now, I'm going to leave it here. And I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.